the exclusion zone kept, kept changing. Yeah. And that was very frustrating because, um, for, for Jim, because we often got ourselves in a position to fire, but we had to ask. It, it wasn't that simple because if, if we were involved in an incident where the, ex I can't believe I'm saying this, where the exclusion zone changed, that would put us in, in a position where uh, I'm sure somebody would say that you, know, you shouldn't have fired. So before we fired, we, we had to ask permission and, and send London our, our coordinates from where we were. And it, it was then that they said, we well, can't fire because we've moved the exclusion zone. It was 12 miles, now it's 20. Now it's 100. So while it's 100 miles, you know, shoot anything within 100 miles. But as soon as you've lined up on a target and then they say, well, it's 80 miles, so it's 20 or it's 12, that, that was the end of that. You know, move a, on. Is there a friction of excitement when you start to talk about engaged and, you know, is that really oh, yeah, to the yeah. shit? Yeah. yeah, and that's any time on a submarine. Um, you know, if, uh, in the sound room, you know, we say that we're in the trail. So, so that would be the same if we were following a Russian. Um, if we're following one of our own submarines on a training exercise, if, if we've picked them up, there's huge pride in getting there first. Um, because once you've detected something, you can keep at a far enough distance so that they can't detect you and have the range advantage. That's absolutely crucial. So if you've got the advantage, you're laughing. And, and so there's huge excitement when you get a contact. Um, and you know damn well they haven't got you. So, so that is, that's, that, as, as far as tactics goes, is, is definitely an adrenaline. And especially, you know, when we're dealing with proper Cold War stuff.